And what do you observe in States Exhibit 36, or I'm sorry, States Exhibit 201I? That is a photograph of that material on the back of the shovel, um, now removed from the shovel and taken by itself. And what do you observe in States Exhibit 201J? This is a photograph of that material underneath the stereo microscope, and the area outlined with the blue box indicates the portion that I took for DNA testing. Okay. And uh, there's something labeled green material. Do you know what that is? I do not. Okay, so you didn't test that material? No. Does the Idaho State Forensic Lab, do you test any materials? Like trace analysis? Yes. We do not have a trace section at our laboratory. Okay. In regards to item 36.3, were you able to obtain a DNA profile? I was. Um, how did you do that? Uh, DNA testing begins with identifying a sample that you want to run for DNA. I then take a portion of that sample and put it into a tube with unique case identifiers on it. I then break open all the cells to release the DNA, uh, and then I determine how much DNA is present in the sample called quantification. From there, we copy the specific locations of DNA that make our forensic DNA profile, and I then visualize those copies which look like peaks on a graph. Once I have my DNA profiles for a case, I can begin to make my comparisons. Okay. During, did you receive any known DNA profiles prior to your testing? Yes. Who did you receive known DNA profiles for? For, for me specifically, I received uh, a sample from Chad Daybell, a sample from Melanie Gibb, and a sample from Richard Mao. The laboratory itself also received other reference samples. Okay, and did, did you receive any other known samples from within your lab? Yes, um, from J.J. Vallow, from Tylee Ryan, from um, Lori Vallow, and I believe um, Dennis Trahan. Okay, so this item. Dennis Trahan. I'm going to put this back up, this item uh, in 201J was located on the back of that shovel. After you obtained a DNA profile, did you compare it to any other known profiles? I did. Uh, did you find any match, or uh, what, what did your comparison show? The DNA profile obtained from item 36.3.5 matched that obtained from the reference sample of Tylee Ryan. This DNA profile is at least 604 octillion times more likely to be seen if Tylee Ryan is the source than if an unrelated, randomly selected individual from the general population is the source. Okay. Can you say that number one more time? 604 octillion. How many zeros is octillion? 27. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me about lab item 36.1? It is a pickaxe from that bag of tools. Okay. Can you tell me what you observe in States Exhibit 201K? This is a photo of the pickaxe that I took and is labeled 36.1. And what, what, if anything, did you do with this tool? I tested it for blood and also examined um, debris and foreign material that I collected from the eye of the pickaxe. And can you tell the jury what you observe in States Exhibit 201L? This is a photograph of the head of the pickaxe. The circle in the center is referred to as the eye of the pickaxe. And when examining it, there was brown colored dirt present, which you see on the left side of the photo that was on the outside. And then when that was removed, there was a much darker material present um, around the eye 
uh, in that area, which I collected, and that's more in the center of the photograph. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 2010. Oh. Is that the same pickaxe? Yes, it's a close-up of that material still present on the eye um, that you can see kind of, you know, where it was located. I'm going to go back to State's Exhibit 201L. And perhaps you already answered it, but can what was the difference between, I'm going to point at, this material here and this material there? The material on the left looked more like dirt. Um, that's not anything that's a scientific conclusion that's apparent, that appears visual, visible to me. Um, and then the material in the center was very dark and it was very, uh, it had an oily texture. When it was removed from the eye of the pickaxe, the metal uh, ring appeared to have kind of a dark greasy ring around it, and then in the material were some larger fragments. Can you tell me what you observe in State's Exhibit 201N, as in November. These are the larger pieces of fragments that I removed from that dark kind of black material from the eye of the pickaxe. And then at the the bottom, that blue line is pointing to the piece that I selected to photograph and run for DNA. Can you tell me what you observe in State's Exhibit 201P? <coughs> this is a view of that material underneath the stereo microscope. And the blue box represents the area I ran for DNA. Were you able to obtain a DNA profile from that subject matter? I was able to obtain a partial DNA profile from this item. And what do you mean by a partial DNA profile? For a DNA profile, we look at 24 locations, and there are times when we do not have enough DNA or the DNA is degraded, and we get results for just some of the locations, and that's referred to as a partial DNA profile. All right. And are you still able to do a comparative analysis with a partial DNA profile? For this partial profile, yes. Okay. And is it, uh, science, is it accepted in the scientific community uh, to do a comparative analysis with a partial profile? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, what, what were the results? Well, what known samples did you compare this against? I compared it against the known samples previously mentioned from this case. Okay. Uh, so... Can you just say it again for the record, which names yes. those would be? Um, well, so in this case, the uh, DNA profile obtained was a female. So uh, in that case, we would just make comparisons to the female references. So I compared it to Lori Vallow and Tylee Ryan. And I believe, I'm not sure if at this time we had the reference sample from Melanie Gibb. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, from your comparative analysis, did you come to any conclusions? Yes. What were those? Um, Tylee Ryan is a potential contributor to this partial DNA profile. This DNA profile is at least 159 trillion times more likely to be seen if it originated from Tylee Ryan than if it originated from an unrelated, randomly selected individual from the general population. Did you do any other testing on item 36.1? Yes, there were some stains that uh, tested presumptively positive for blood on the handle. Okay. Can you describe uh, what you observed in State's Exhibit 201M? These are the two areas that tested positive, or two of the areas that tested positive um, on the handle. What did they test positive for? Uh, blood. Okay. And were you able to do any further testing on those samples? Yes, I swabbed those samples and um, ran the entire swab for DNA. Okay. 
Uh, were you able to obtain a DNA profile from those samples? I was. Okay. Uh, did you do that in the same manner in which you've described preparing a DNA profile before? Yes. Okay. Uh, and were you, you were able to obtain a profile? Yes. Uh, did you do any comparative analysis with that profile against other known profiles? I did. Uh, what was the conclu Were you able to reach a conclusion? Um, the DNA profile from item 36.1.3 matched that obtained from the reference sample of Tylee Ryan. Again, this DNA profile is at least 604 octillion times more likely to be seen if Tylee Ryan is the source than if an unrelated, randomly selected individual from the general population is the source. Ms. Stace, you talked earlier about um, examining duct tape. Yes. Is there a, a, a hierarchy of, of testing? And uh, maybe that's not the best way to say it. Is, is there a priority of, of different types of forensic testing for an item such as duct tape? Yes, and it depends on the specific case. Um, however, when you are looking at duct tape that was attached to a person, um, it's very likely to find their DNA, and it can be very difficult to find DNA from someone else since the duct tape itself is going to take the DNA from the skin it was touching or the clothing that it was touching. Uh, especially with the presence of blood and decomposition fluid, um, the chances of getting a foreign DNA profile were quite low. And in this case, I only swabbed a few of the tape ends for saliva and then left the rest of the tape uh, for latent print analysis. Okay. Ms. Stace, are you familiar, are you aware if any items uh, that you collected were ever sent to any other labs for further testing? I believe some of the trace we collected from the tape was sent to another laboratory. Okay. Can you tell me what you observe in States Exhibit 201Q? These are some of the hairs that were collected from the tape from the plastic and duct tape that the body was wrapped in. So uh, this is the, 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 the black bag and duct tape that were on the exterior of JJ, correct? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't the duct tape wrapped around his arms? Correct. Okay. Um, is there a pointer up there? Is this a pointer? It's, so it's hard to see through the projector on uh, the yellow sticky pad marked as B. Is there a hair on there? Yes. Uh, it is on the top half of the, the piece of paper, um, and it kind of goes like that. Okay. And is, is that a hair that you collected? Yes. Okay. Um, were you able to test that hair? No. Okay. Uh, are you aware if that hair was sent to any other lab for testing? Yes, uh, it was sent to Bodhi Lab.